Moving to the third module, or our third learning objective for chapter four, we now want to look at the journalization and posting of the closing entries. I know we cover this briefly when we talked about the type of accounts. Closing entries will apply to the temporary accounts, revenues, expenses, and dividends. When we looked at uh, chapter one, we know that the change in owner's wealth is transferred to retained earnings at the end of each accounting period. The change in owner's wealth for any particular period, as we said, or net income, net loss, minus any dividends. This, again, represents what we call the composition of the temporary accounts. Temporary accounts will consist of revenues and expenses and dividends. So when we think about these temporary accounts, within net income or net loss, and then of course we have dividends. So net income or net loss will have revenues, expenses, and of course the dividends. These are temporary accounts. It means that they will only last for one accounting period they will be closed out at the end of each accounting period so that the next accounting period will begin with a zero balance. So because net income or net loss is transferred to retained earnings, we talked about articulation, we transfer net income or net loss from the income statement to the statement of retained earnings, revenues and expenses must begin each year with a zero balance balance so that the income statement accounts and dividends are known as temporary and we said that these are completed cycles. They will have no effect directly on next year's income or dividends. So just think about this on a personal level and I always try to emphasize that if you think about accounting in terms of your own finances or personal finances, it makes it a lot easier. So for instance, if you're filing your taxes this year or you wanted to find out what you earned, let's say for 2015, that W-2 form only includes the 12-month period for 2015. Then your next paycheck in 2016, so let's say you have a January 8th paycheck that will include 2016 earnings but 2016 earnings as of January 1 of 2016 are equal to zero. So you have no earnings as of January 1st of 2016. And those earnings, once you start getting a paycheck, start to accumulate and have nothing to do with the 2015 W-2 form. So these are sometimes called temporary accounts or nominal accounts, but they are completed accounting cycles. Conversely, as we know, the balance sheet consists of permanent accounts, sometimes called real accounts for some reason, but they call real accounts, and they are cumulative, and their balances are carried forward period after period. And we said this earlier, that the balance sheet reflects incomplete accounting cycles. These cycles will be completed in the next accounting period when we use assets to generate revenue. Some of our liabilities will require cash payment. So balance sheet accounts carry over period after period. They are not closed out 
So it's very important to note that when we say they're permanent, balance sheet accounts are not closed. And when we say they're carried forward period after period, the ending balance, the ending balance at 12 31 2015 is equal to the beginning balance of January 1st of 2016. So the ending balance of one year becomes the beginning balance of the next. Now, of course, we don't close out balance sheet accounts, but going back to the income statement accounts of revenues and expenses, gains and losses, as well as your dividends, question again, they have to be closed. How do we close them out? What's the process? In order to begin each year with a zero balance, all of these temporary accounts, as we know, they're closed out to retained earnings. And we do that through the use of what we call closing entries. Closing entries will produce the zero balances in revenues and expenses and the dividend accounts. And remember, when we say revenues, we also include gains. And when we say expenses, we also include loss accounts as well. Okay, so gains and losses are also included. The closing entries will close out revenues, expenses, gains, losses, and dividends. And once we have these accounts at zero balances, they are now ready to be used in each accounting period or the new accounting period. So again, you know, we just like your W-2 form, when 2015 is ended, you have $30,000 of part-time earnings or $15,000 in part-time earnings. That's it for 2015. When you go to 2016, as of January 1st, your earnings are zero. And then, of course, as you start to get paid, you start to accumulate the data for the next accounting period. So we don't lose information. I mean, don't think that by closing these to zero, we lose information. We're not losing information. In fact, those temporary accounts are now made permanent by transferring them to retained earnings. So if we look at this in a diagram, we've got revenue, gains, expenses, which are negative, which we'll put in brackets, losses, and dividends. These are temporary accounts. They go to zero balances. But their balances are transferred to retained earnings. So these are temporary. account balances, but when their balances go to zero, it doesn't mean that information is lost. Their balances are transferred to retained earnings where they are now added to a permanent account. So the, the way we do this is through the closing entries to formally recognize in the ledger the transfer of net income or net loss and dividends to retained earnings, as we've already seen in the statement of retained earnings or the retained earnings statement. When we journalize and post these closing entries, this is a required step in the accounting cycle, which, as I said, in the last learning objective or module, this is not accomplished through the worksheet. The worksheet is a tool, but it does not have 
any implications for the formal accounting records. In order to transfer the post the the closing entries, they must be both journalized and posted. And before we start, again, make sure we differentiate that revenues, expenses, gains, losses, and dividends are your temporary or nominal accounts, and your balance sheet accounts are the real or permanent accounts, asset liabilities, and stockholders equity. So to summarize, we close revenues, expenses, and dividends, and please make sure that you're clear that we also have gains that are going to be closed and losses are also going to be closed. We do not close asset liabilities common stock, contributed capital, and retained earnings. So at the end of each period, the accounts that are closed would be transferred to retained earnings. Now, closing all of these revenues and expense account and dividends, if we did this by closing them to the retained earnings account directly, uh, it would clutter the retained earnings account. It would cause too much detail in the retained earnings account. Now, we do, in fact, close dividends directly, but the multiple closings of maybe 40, 50, 60 different types of expenses, maybe hundreds of large corporations, multiple accounts that represent revenues, gains, those would make very um, much or create excessive detail in the retained earnings account. Therefore, we use another temporary account in the closing process. We create it in the closing process and we bring it to a zero balance. And this is called income summary. And it is another temporary account. Another temporary account. And its purpose is for closing revenues, expenses, gains, and losses. So once again, it's designed for revenues, gains, expenses, and losses does not apply to dividends. Dividends get closed directly to retained earnings. So please note that income summary is not used for dividends. I mean, you might say, well, it's kind of obvious you're calling it income summary, and we know that dividends are not expenses. But again, in the early stages of the course, it's important to emphasize and re-emphasize certain parts of what is a new language. Now, let's look at the closing process. The steps in the closing process, there are four of them. We have four closing entries. The first closing entry will debit each revenue account and credit income summary for the total. Then, and I'll show you an example in a moment or tie it into the T accounts. Second, you debit the income summary for the total of all of the expenses and credit each individual account to bring that to zero. By the way, debiting revenues in number um, step number one is also going to bring that account to a zero balance. Now, once you've transferred all of the revenues and all of the expenses to income summary, the balance in the income summary account will be the income or loss for the period. So that if there is net income, there'd be a credit balance to make income summary zero, which again is another temporary account. It has to be debited. Or if there's a net loss, there's a debit balance in income summary, which has to be credited to make that account zero. And then, of course, we would have dividends being closed directly to retained earnings. So let me, I have some T accounts on the next page, but I am going to go to the doc cam in a moment. But here's the process. All of your revenues, so let's start with, and I'll put some numbers up in just a second, but all of your revenues have credit balance. To make them zero, they are debited and we credit income summary. Then, all of your expenses have debit balance, we'll credit them to income summary. So let's just put some numbers in here. Let's assume that you've got 
of revenues and you have $800 of expenses. The closing entry, debits, revenue for $1,000 and credits, income summary for $1,000. At this point, the revenue account is zero. Going over to the expenses, the expenses have a debit balance, and this would be for all of the expenses. This could be multiple accounts, and in fact, revenues could be multiple accounts as well. All right, so it doesn't have to be just one account. But assuming we have one account for expenses, it has a debit balance. To make that zero, we have to credit it. So we're going to debit income summary for the expenses and credit expenses, making that account zero. Now, at this point, if you take a look at revenues of 1,000, expenses of eight, the difference is 200. That's gonna be your net income or loss for the period. And if you remember, expenses are temporary, revenues are temporary, but so is income summary. This has to be closed out and we do that by debiting the income summary account, which now makes that account zero, and crediting retained earnings. So the first thing to note is revenues and expenses, revenues and expenses and income summary are all transferred, or at least the income summary is transferred to retained earnings. So revenues get close to income summary, expenses get close to income summary, third step, is we close income summary to retained earnings. And dividends, which is another temporary account, is closed directly to retained earnings. So let's say dividends are $50. We're gonna debit retained earnings for 50 and credit the dividends account. Dividends are zero now, and the ending balance, let's say the beginning balance of retained earnings was zero. The beginning balance, zero, net income of two, minus the dividends are of 50, are, is gonna give us an ending retained earning balance of 150. Now again, just a couple of other things, just to be very clear, revenues get close to income summary, expenses get close to income summary, income summary is close to retained earnings. Dividends are directly closed to the retained earnings account. Now, what we're gonna do is let's now go to the actual closing entries and refer back to our example of Smart Touch. And we know that they had 17,500 in revenue. So if you go back to an earlier module, you'll know that they had 17,500 in their revenue account, there's the credit balance. To make that account zero, closing entry one, debits the revenue and credits income summary. That now goes to a zero balance so that next year we start accumulating revenues again. When these are posted, we're gonna debit, post it to the ledger. Don't forget this to journal. This is the ledger. Posting by debiting service revenue and crediting the income summary. The next closing entry or closing entry two is going to debit income summary for $89.50 and you're going to credit all of the individual accounts, which we're not showing here because they're extensive. But if you look at the ledger, you're gonna be crediting each one of these accounts. Each one of these accounts will be credited and therefore it will result in a zero balance. So going over to the doc cam or the whiteboard as I have up there right now, you'll notice that if I was to look at the general ledger, So we have, we have six or seven expense accounts. 
and we have rent salaries supplies utilities and we have depreciation expense and that is for the furniture and then we have depreciation expense for the building and then we have interest the balances and these are the existing balances we had three thousand forty eight four one hundred three hundred two fifty and one hundred so these are your expense accounts all of them have debit balances all of them have debit balances now to close these out we're going to close out everything to income summary so when we make the journal entry that let me go back to the entry itself when we make the journal entry we debit the income summary account for the total of all of the expenses that the entity incurred during the year and that's 8950 and then we credit each individual account so going back to the whiteboard in order to close this or if we're going to close out the entries or close out the T accounts by making that adjusting entry when we close it we're going to credit each account so the first thing I'm going to go back here 89.50 is the sum of all of those expenses so we debit income summary credit rent expense credit salary expense credit supplies close utilities buy a credit close depreciation buy a credit of three for the furniture we're going to close the the building depreciation by a credit of 250 and we're going to close the interest by crediting that account for 100 so right now the income summary account has a debit balance of 8950 for those expenses now we also know that we close revenue And that closing was one entry of 17.5. So the balance in the income summary account at this point should be 8,550. And it should have a credit balance. Now we know that's going to be net income for the year. And we know that that has to be closed out to retained earnings. So let's see the entry at this point that we would make. So as I just mentioned, the income summary account has a credit balance of 8550. So I would have to debit the income summary and credit the retained earnings and then post those to each of the respective accounts.
So we debit income summary for the net income for the year, and we credit retained earnings. So at this point, we have net income transferred to retained earnings. That income is transferred to retained earnings. And the last closing entry would be dividends. So the last closing entry is going to be the dividends. And we do that by taking this debit balance and dividends. We credit dividends and debit retained earnings directly. So the ending balance of retained earnings is $35.50. And don't forget, of course, the entries were made first. So these are the journalized entries that we have in terms of the closing process. You would journalize first and then post. So you would debit retained earnings in the journal entry and that debit shows up in the retained earn earnings account in the general ledger. And of course the dividends would be credited in the journal and then posted to the ledger account. So we're just about done with the accounting cycle. Now, what we'd have to do is, now that we have the closing entries, that are journalized and posted, to the general ledger or the T accounts. The problem is now that we have general ledger accounts that have just been affected by the journalization of the closing entries. That means that we're going to have to prepare a post closing trial balance. And the post-closing trial balance will be inclusive of only balance sheet accounts that are permanent. There'll be no income statement accounts. and no dividend account. Now, this is going to be the subject of our last module in Chapter 4. So in Module 4 of Chapter 4, we're going to look at preparing the post-closing trial balance.